I want to return to this idea of the evolution of consciousness. And I think I'm probably going to come across as a bit of a pedant here, or a bit of a language maven, as Stephen Pinker calls it. But I want to make the case for, uh, well, what, you know, what would need to be in place, I suppose, if, if we were to say that consciousness did evolve. Uh, and I think there's a few things. Firstly, I think we'd need to demonstrate that consciousness was um, a thing, really, a thing that could be talked about meaningfully and that we could have common agreement about what kind of a thing it was. Uh, at the moment, we don't have that. There's no clear suggestion of what consciousness is. I'm not denying its existence, of course. Clearly, it exists. But uh, there's no indication that it's a, even that it is a thing. Many people say it's a process, for example. Uh, but, but in order to evolve, to have a consciousness that evolves, you'd have to demonstrate its thingness. Then you'd have to demonstrate that the kind of thing that it was, was a replicator that was capable of producing uh, copies of itself. Uh, I think this is different to mimetics, by the way. I don't want to confuse this, this, um, uh, this conversation with mimetics. Mimetics and memes are something very different to consciousness. But you'd have to demonstrate that consciousness re uh, replicated itself. Then you'd have to demonstrate that there was um, variation in those uh, copies, in those replicants. And then you'd have to demonstrate that these multiple, multiple slightly variant consciousnesses existed in an environment which placed ecological pressure on those uh, variants, such that there was uh, differential survival rates. And then you'd have to demonstrate that the, uh, the differential survival rate of these replicating consciousnesses uh, you know, led to a kind of, uh, it was an ongoing process of an increasing, of increasing fitness to the ecological environment in which those consciousnesses existed. I have to say, and as I said, this might be very pedantic, but I don't think consciousness fits any single one of those. As I say, no one's demonstrated that consciousness is the kind of thing that can be talked about in a meaningful way yet. Uh, there's too much disagreement, and there's certainly no agreement of whether it's a thing or not. Uh, following from that, of course, inevitably, there's no evidence that consciousness replicates itself. Brains replicate, clearly, and the, or at least the bodies that possess brains replicate, but that's not the same thing. Uh, since they don't replicate themselves, of course there's no evidence that consciousness replicates itself with variation. Nor is there any sort of indication that consciousness exists, or multiple consciousness exists simultaneously in an environment that produces ecological pressure and differential survival rates. None of that stuff's in place. So if we're talking about evolution of consciousness, uh, I think we're using the term evolution incorrectly. If I, if I can just kind of defend my uh, uh, kind of language maven approach to this, really. The reason why I think evolution is a really important term to protect and why I'm being so persistent about naming the elements which need to be in place is because this, you know, conscious uh, evolution is an incredibly powerful idea. You know, Dan Dennett says it's probably the best idea anybody's ever had. And the, the, the strength of the idea is in its detail, it's in its particularities. It's the only mechanism ever found so far, any natural method, which produces complexity. It's the only one we've got. And it doesn't produce complexity because it's some vague notion of change. It produces complexity through those um, stages and those um, mechanisms that I just mentioned. And it's the only one. And it's in, so it's very powerful for that reason. It's also powerful because it's so um, well articulated in terms of the, how the elements work together. You know, it isn't some, it isn't random change just for its own sake. It has a, an inbuilt set of criteria for how change, is, how different changes and mutations become valuable. Uh, it has inbuilt checks and balances to assure that, to, to make sure that the the environment, the, the uh, evolutionary process is completely in lockstep with the ecological environment in which it exists. It maps changes in the ecological environment to changes in the, uh, in the, the replicant, whatever it is. Uh, so it has a whole set of processes which are much, much, much more complex 
and other ideas to do with development or change or transformation do the slightly vaguer terms that we use. So I am very attached to it as a term because of, it, because of the accuracy of it. And I think that's uh, something worth protecting. I have no problem with other terms like development. It's just I think if we use terms like development or like terms like change, then we're pretty much obliged to import things like values and import criteria for excellence and import all those kind of things from elsewhere. They're not even built into the system. Uh, we, and we might need to do that. I think there's good reasons why we should do that in, in, in other kinds of processes. Uh, you know, educational processes are processes of development. And, uh, and we decide what to educate our children, what to educate ourselves. We make value judgments. There isn't something inherent built into education that just kind of naturally devises curricula for children to learn so they fit into the ecological niche. That's not how it works. We import a value system from the outside and decide what's needed to be, what, what needs to be um, inputted. So I'm not so that's a very valuable process, but it's not evolution, and I think confusing the two is, is tricky. I have to take particular issue, I think, with um, what's he called, um, Erwin Thompson. I can't remember his first name. It's gone. Richard. Anyway, he's got this article in um, Journal of Consciousness Studies, which uh, Matt, that, uh, that actually reminded me of. So I went and had a look at it this morning, and. Uh, he starts off this article, and it's about the kind of evolution of consciousness stuff. And he starts off this, this article by talking about biological evolution and the idea that um, people who are in the field of, of developing ideas around the evolution of consciousness, he puts it, and also the evolution of culture, says that those terms, that word evolution, is used metaphorically. Now, I have to say I have a bit of a problem with that. Uh, I don't know why you would use it metaphorically, and I don't, I don't think it makes any sense, if I'm honest. Because evolution is a system, it's a process. It, 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 the only naturally occurring version of it we know about is biological evolution, but, uh, but it can be and has been applied um, in other ways. You know, there are software programs which allow you to um, evolve architectur architectural forms, for example. And all those uh, elements that I said before about, you know, replicants, replicants with variation, differential survival rates in, in, uh, under environmental pressure, all those kind of things are in place in silicon form within those, um, within those software programs. And there's lots of that going on. There's lots of artificial evolution processes um, that have been created for, for all kinds of purposes. Problem solving purposes. But, um, but as I say, the only naturally occurring one is, is, is biological evolution. But, it, but the evolution refers to the process, not to the little elements you put in the slot, not what particular replicant it is, replicator, not what particular bio, um, environmental, you know, what the details of that is. You can drop into anything into those slots as long as they fulfill the function within the mechanism that's supposed to fulfill. So given that it's that, you know, what does it, what does it mean to say that evolution might be used metaphorically? Uh, you, you, you can't really do it. You can only use it wrongly, I think. You can only misapply it. You can just drop. You can just leave out one or two of the elements, or you can, you know, substitute uh, the natural selection bit for artificial selection. You know, you can you can do those kinds of things. That's not a metaphor. That's a different process, um, and it's a bit sloppy, really. So, although I know I'm sounding very pedantic, um, and I know the word evolution is used in many different ways. I think certainly when we're trying to uh, move towards accuracy and clarity and, um, and shared understanding, it's useful to have really powerful concepts like evolution, well articulated and, um, you know, and reasonably well adhered to, I think.